starting with our discussion segment today. If you have uh, read some of the recent publication by the WHO and uh, also by the NCDC, you would have read that uh, uh, there is a latest one that uh, seems to be very, very worrisome. You know, saying that uh, there are suggestive uh, ways to prove that COVID-19 may just be airborne. And to get you uh, with the latest report now, just as we read a while ago, the uh, uh, COVID-19 updates, and uh, we have that as confirmed cases as 33,616, and uh, also for active cases in Nigeria, 19,070, while we have discharge cases, 13,792. Uh, for death so far in the country, it uh, stands at 754. Those are uh, the latest update by the NCDC uh, talking about the COVID-19. Well, to look at this uh, recent uh, mode of transmission as, uh, uh, you, know, you know, kind of uh, being concerned about by the WHO, we are so privileged to have two gentlemen here today. First of all, we have Dr. Leonard Asikidi, who is a consultant and family phys uh, physician with uh, the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, and also a very, very formidable member of uh, the NBA in Edo State and in, also in Nigeria here. So you welcome to the program this morning on ITV. Thank you, thank You're you. Welcome, it's a sir. pleasure. We also have Dr. Bruce Osa, who is the Director of Disease Control with uh, Edo State Ministry of Health. So you welcome to this program this morning. Yeah, good morning, good morning, viewers. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, gentlemen, I'm sorry you may have seen that uh, because when I stumbled on this headline, <laughs> I was thinking about I mean, for a virus we've been fighting, and all this while the authorities have told us that this virus can only be contacted, you know, through placing our hands on surfaces. Now we are told that uh, there are suggest uh, suggestive, uh, you know, concerns that this virus may just be airborne. Uh, the question we're asking here is, if it is airborne, what can there now be the preventive measures uh, we can begin to uh, take, uh, you know, to fight this COVID-19? I'll start with Dr. Leo Atikide. Uh, good morning, viewers. Well, it's uh, actually, like we all know, COVID-19 is actually an evolving disease, and there are certainly going to be more discoveries each day. And uh, recently, the issue of COVID-19 being a born is now a born issue. And uh, what that simply means that, you know, initially we were saying that WHO insisted that it was just by droplet infection. And, uh, but now that we are discovering that it could be airborne, you know, there are, you know, what happens is this, droplets are a bit, they are heavier than, air. than droplet nuclei. So the droplets, once you release them, they fall to the ground. Mm. But for droplet nuclei, they can be in the air for some time. Okay. And that means... What do you mean uh, droplet nuclei now? For example, when you cough yeah. or you sneeze, you release, there's some spray that goes out. And that spray that goes out, there are bigger particles and there are smaller particles. The smaller particles are the one we regard as droplet nuclear. And for droplet nuclear, they are quite tiny, that air can, they can be propelled in air for some time. And in the course of that, that means you can inhale them. And if you inhale them, then of course, you can also be infected. But for just droplets, they are heavier. So when you spray, they fall straight to the ground. So for droplet nuclear, that, that makes it more dangerous for, for the society, you know? But again, in terms of preventive measures, the measures are still virtually the same. For example, you need to use your face mask. You know, if you are, you need to avoid crowded places. You need to, again, ensure that you don't touch your, you know, uh, surfaces. For example, you are climbing stairs, avoid the ways. And <clears throat> even if, because like your door, for example, so many people open the same door several times. And in the course of opening a door, you can actually also get your hands contaminated. And that is why we advise that you should also wash your hands frequently. And stop, don't touch your face, you know, with your hands anyhow. Well, if you do, you may also be transmitting this uh, virus, you know, to yourself. So that, because it, it actually, you know, uh, infection actually goes down through your mucosa surfaces. That's your eyes, your mouth, you know. So we advise that, yes, 
you must keep wearing your face mask. Once, whether you're in a bus, you are, you know, outside your house. Once you're outside your house, get your face mask. Now, the kind of uh, face mask we use is also uh, one major thing that people have expressed concern about. I mean, you are telling us uh, that uh, the COVID-19 virus is, uh, no, is uh, no clear uh, droplets, is nuclear dro droplets. In other words, uh, you may not be able to see it with the, uh, with the ordinary eye because of the tiny particles. Now, you have a series of various types of uh, uh, fixed masks around. Do you think those fixed masks can actually prevent COVID-19? If we're talking about a very tiny uh, particle of a virus. Well, from uh, uh, what WHO has done, they talk about N95 uh, face mask. But again, you discover that that is not actually within the reach of the common man. And outside that... How do you mean? Is it expensive it's or expensive. it's available? It's expensive. Okay, N95? Yes, uh, it's expensive. Okay. But again, you have the other simple masks that used to be very cheap but people capitalize on it and they have increased the price also, the normal surgical mask. But again, people have also devised other means, like we see different kinds of masks here and there now, with the one they sew with clothes and, they, and they all this kind of, there are some, there are also some other masks that are actually very friable. Some people use a hanky, the handkerchief to do face mask. But there's some level of protection with any of those face masks. But for effectiveness, one cannot really guarantee that they are as effective as the N95, which is the most effective one that has been. Okay. Yes. Well, let me come to uh, Dr. Buzosa now. Yeah. Now, uh, Doctor, I'm going to be asking you what you guys are doing in the Ministry of Health, and I also, uh, I also wanted to, uh, uh, you know, react to recent allegations, so to say, now that uh, no testing going on anymore in those states and all that. Now, we're talking about suggestive evidence here that uh, the COVID-19 is airborne. What are your concerns? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, as my friend rightly said, the disease is an evolving disease, and many studies have been carried out. As at yesterday, uh, WHO website, we talked about uh, that studies are being carried out now we really know whether it is airborne. Not that it's really airborne. We are carrying our studies to know whether it is airborne. Yeah, but it's uh, suggestive evidence. Yes. Uh, what I will say is that uh, as, of, as of now, COVID-19 is a droplet infection. Because if we really look at uh, the size of the virus, it's a little bit heavier than normal virus. It's heavier. And uh, they noticed that... Uh, a little bit heavier or tinier. Heavier than In other virus. virus, yes. And uh, they found out that uh, the size is really more than 5 micrometer. But anything less than 5 micrometer is uh, uh, droplet nuclei or aerosol. Okay. Uh, aerosol. So why we use this physical distancing? Because of the size. Once it is released, it doesn't go far before it drops down because of gravity. So that is why we say social distancing at least a meter. Because it has been found out that once the virus is released, the particles released into the air, it doesn't travel more than a meter before it falls down. So that if you give that physical distancing, you will not be able to inhale it. So as of now, studies are still being carried out. And uh, just to add to what my friend said about uh, face mask, really the N95 face mask is used in treatment centers. Not that everybody will be using N95. It's for treatment centers. Then other persons use surgical mask. But when they then notice that the surgical mask was no more readily available, we now resorted to this uh, reusable mask. But this reusable mask, there is a way to test its effectiveness. That because provides yes, like any mask, if you wear it, just light a candle, put it in your front, blow, blow air through it. If it's off, you know that uh, the COVID-19 particles can pass through it. Okay. If it is not off, you know it's okay. All right, so what you're mm. saying is that before you procure your mask, you, you can must test it. See if you you have, to, yes, that is NCDC uh, uh, guideline. Okay. That most of these masks, too, they have pouches that you can put uh, something like a filter 
if you look at the the ones that uh, the death from NCDC, there is a filter in the a pouch, and the filter is really like a survey paper yeah. that you can, uh, when you want to wash the mask, you remove it, wash, when it is dry, you can put a survey paper. That survey paper acts as a barrier, so that when you do this, you will not be able to contract uh, this uh, COVID-19 when the particles they are in the air. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. let's come to Edo State now. Mm -hmm. uh, by your office, mm -hmm. the Director of Disease uh, Bureau Country in Edo State with the Minister mm -hmm. of Health. Now, uh, recently, we understand that uh, uh, testing and screening of... Uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is, uh, from, how was the word now? Uh, people that may have COVID-19 that has since stopped. Now, we keep on having numbers increasing daily. We have numbers from various states, Edo State inclusive. People can't, you know, put things together. I mean, if the testing has stopped, how come we still have numbers coming out? Okay, thank you very much. Testing has not stopped. If you really look at it, uh, when we were starting this response, there was uh, we had a target, and the, uh, the we had a target to screen at least five hundred thousand persons from Edo State to have five thousand tests done. And all the persons that are positive, to we should be able to treat them. So one of the ways to reach that target was we designed different methods because we, we have hospitals scattered around the 18 local government, both uh, tertiary, secondary, and primary health care centers. Testing, screening is going on. There's a difference between screening and testing. Which one is going on? Are uh, the screening and the testing, both, or the testing? Both the screening and testing is going on. Let me just say, uh, the screening that we are doing is questionnaire-based screening. Yeah, but, but we don't have, I, I, no, I remember, mm -hmm. you know, like two or three weeks ago. Let me just land. Have, we could see, yes. see them strategically. Yeah, let me just land. We don't yes. have that anymore. The screening, we had facility-based screening. That's the screening that's going on in the health facilities, secondary, tertiary, primary health care centers, all over those states. Screening is going on there. Then we now added mobile screening. In mobile screening, we added it in uh, uh, six heavily burdened uh, local government. That's Oedo, Ekubaha, Ego, of where northeast, uh, Esan West, and Esako West. Because from the data that we got, we were seeing that most of the persons that are positive were from this local government. So we had to do mobile screening, targeted screening, so that we increase the screening of our persons. Mm -hmm. Also, we now have border screening. We have 10 borders in the state. We have people manning it and screening persons that are living and coming to the state. You still have them now? No. Okay. It was a 90 days uh, uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. And the 90 days ended June 30th. So after June, to, before that 90 days uh, ended, we've already got into the target of 500,000. 500, As of yesterday, we've screened 527,000 persons in the state. So where are you getting your results from? That's what I want to tell you now. Screen. Yes. When you do this questionnaire-based screening, you will not categorize the person that are screened to low risk, medium risk, and high risk from the questionnaire and from the, uh, uh, the temperature check mm -hmm. and other questions. There are 11 questions in the questionnaire. So based on the answers that we get, automatically there is, uh, if you enter into the system, if something has been inbuilt into the system, it will show you whether this, after a uh, screening, whether it's low risk, high risk, medium risk. Those that are medium risk, high risk, samples are collected from them. And you, you say that they are positive? Samples are collected from them and will not take it to the lab to go and test. Okay. So when the result comes out, we already know whether it is positive or negative. Okay. As uh, at yesterday, yeah. we've tested this testing now, person that we've collected samples from. And person that we collected samples from, they are suspected cases. Okay. Because a suspected case is person that we collect sample from. As I yesterday, we've tested 7,749, uh, 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 we've collected 7,749 samples. And out of these, 1,807 became positive. Okay, and mm -hmm. those 1,807 now, you left them alone? No. They are various... No, look at uh, it. And started a strategy uh, for this, uh, for this treatment. Any, any identification mm -hmm. that our testing, and when you test, when they are positive, you isolate them. Isolate them from the society 
we treat them. If you guys leave them, they can spread it. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at the situation whereby yeah. there's no more. The interstate lockdown has since uh, yeah. uh, been released. That means yeah. uh, people can travel yeah. from one place to another now. Yes. Say, for example, I'm in Edo State. Now, I came for your testing and I'm positive. Then, of course, I left. I leave Benin City. I go to Lagos. How will you? Uh, yes, where we, are, where, we are, where, we are, where we are collecting your sample, there's what you call case identification form that we fill contains your bio data. That's the beauty of it. Or even the line that comes from the testing centers, all your bio data is there. That's well, the information that I we, give to yes. you. What about if I, if I force the information? Well, what we do, we know that, uh, yes, it was very a challenge. Some persons that were positive, we could not reach them because they gave, either gave a wrong address or they gave wrong phone numbers. But what we do now, during the time of uh, filling the form, when you give a number, we told our persons in the field that they should try the number. Mm. Because, sorry to say, persons are, they are looking for ways not to get treated. The only thing I want to say is that they, look, they, COVID, they don't want to be isolated. I think that's, that's Yes, but COVID-19 is not a death sentence. Because if really, uh, before you take the test or you take the sample, somebody is cancelled. Mm. If we know that uh, every time the result comes, the result is going to be either positive or negative. And if it is positive, from that counseling, you tell them this is what you expect. If it is negative, this is what you do. Okay, let, yeah. let me bring the, the doctor here, yeah. Dr. Leo Atsikini. Now, we have a situation whereby uh, we have some uh, people that are asymptomatic, asymptomatic, as in they carry the virus, they don't show any symptoms, they don't even know, and of course, they keep on spreading the, the disease and all that. And now that we are told that, look, this thing <laughs> may be more than uh, we know, uh, I wanted to speak in line, you know, uh, look, looking at all this, how do, how we do, can we really uh, make sure that we really prevent ourselves against this COVID-19? Uh, it's actually a big challenge because uh, if somebody is asymptomatic and, uh, and it's, it's uh, a case of uh, COVID, mm. and of course you won't blame that person really. Because one is there, there are no signs or symptoms, and two, the man is just going around because uh, he feels that he's well. But again, that is why we must, you know, abide by the guidelines that have been provided by NCDC. Because somebody could be your friend, and you just say, uh, we have known each other, so we are friends, and so nothing, nothing they happen. But if we follow the guidelines of SCDC, you discover that that person, you know, may not be able to spread it to you, like we talked about use of face masks earlier on, and uh, uh, physical distancing, and what have you. So, yes. People are going around, and that is why we are having a, what we call community uh, transmission right now. But it's for us to adhere strictly to the guidelines that are provided by government. And if we do, I think they were, we will certainly minimize the effect of uh, COVID-19 and its spread. But if we just begin to leave, uh, you know, uh, in nonchalance or give a you know, natural attitude to the whole to the whole issue. We discover that we might be as, as the serious risk. You know, there are some places I've been to recently where they are conducting barriers, and you just see that it's like those who have never heard of COVID-19. Everybody is associating the same usual way, well, dancing and all those. So, it's, again, we also need to continue to emphasize our you know enlightenment because. People, especially if you go to rural uh, areas, you discover that those people just believe that there's nothing like, they will tell you straight away that there's nothing like COVID-19 and that it doesn't even exist here. Mm. So we need to continue to let the people know that this disease is here with us and we must adapt our lifestyle to suit guidelines that will be provided by NCDC and by various state governments. All right, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Leonard talked about uh, community transfer, and there's no doubt that that's the stage that we're in now. Uh, what I remember when uh, the president was going to release the lockdown, now there was an understanding that um, uh, efforts were going to be intensified to make sure that uh, even when people have to leave from one community to another, 
uh, the mode of transmission will not be that easy. But the way it is now, I mean, if you go to uh, the boundaries, uh, take for example Edo State, you just find some policemen that's good enough, they wear their, they have their fixed masks, but they don't test, they don't have testing kit, they don't even have an ordinary infrared thermometer to check somebody's temperature and to see whether the, this person is liable to having COVID-19 and all that. Now, as the uh, 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 director of uh, disease control in Edo State, what are you put doing? What is the ministry doing in this regard? No, we, we, that what I uh, uh, spoke on earlier on. Mm -hmm. One of our strategies was this border screen, border post screen. We had posts in all the borders entering Edo State and people coming out from Edo State. After 90 days, we've noticed that the persons that we are screening, most of them were even low risk. Most of them. And not only that, after 90 days, it was a strategy for us to get to that 500,000. Since we've gotten there now, and uh, you know, Edo State is not in isolation. The whole country now, you can move from state to state. The only thing is that what we should be preaching is the preventive measures because you can be in Edo State, you can be in Lagos State, it's the same preventive measures. Try physical distancing. Always uh, wear face masks when you are outside your house. Because face masks, really, the persons that are asymptomatic, you will even know. Persons that are even symptomatic, you will know whether it is COVID. Not until you, you test. So prevention is always better than care. When we take all these preventive measures uh, uh, in our hearts, you see this community spread will stop. But if you go out now, you see that most persons, when you even do the, the, the right thing, they will be looking at you as an outcast. You understand? Go to the market, you are even telling them, wear your face mask. They, are not, they will even be looking at you as somebody that is uh, not normal. The only thing I will just uh, say is that, Enforcement, law enforcement agencies, they should be out to help to drive government directives. Mm. Because government has already come out to say, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, you will not, uh, you hardly get COVID 19. But persons are not doing it. So, what we should be preaching now, behavioral change. I know it doesn't come in one day. Let us wear our face mask when we are going out. Let us not shake our hands. There is a way we shake now, whether you use your leg or you use your elbow. We should do that. Avoid places that are overcrowded. Even in the church, there are even some churches that even don't even uh, do what government says they should be doing. Because the directors that uh, really release uh, church services now, 200. At least people should be spaced out in the, in the church. But there are some the churches. Ministry enforcing that. Yeah, yeah, no, look, yes. I look, mean, uh, we, the, when look, churches were asked yeah. to go back, we understand that the directive was that uh, from zero to fifteen years are not supposed to be in church. Yes. Now. Then from sixty uh, years and above. Sixty years, fifty-five and, years mm, and above, above. Are supposed to be in church yes. right now. But is your ministry mm -hmm. enforcing that? Mm -hmm. Because if you go to churches, there mm -hmm. are evidence to prove that the young people still go to, to churches. Yeah, mm -hmm. ministry uh, two weeks ago or even just last week. We sensitized the whole of Khan, Christian Association of Nigeria. The uh, delegates came from all over the states. We had more than 300 persons in their hall, but the sitting arrangement, we, we observed that physical distancing because the hall they even used was ground floor and the second floor. And all the persons, the leadership of uh, our churches, we spoke with them. And we told them this is what government, they already have the directives, but we just won't call them to go and enforce what directives that the government has given. That's the question. Uh, and the enforcement really, enforcement really is a security outfit that do the enforcement. As, the, I mean, what we do, there are numbers. Once we notice that any church is uh, not really doing what they are supposed to do. Call that number because in the response there is a security pillar. It is multi-disciplinary uh, 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 approach that we are using for this response. There is a pillar, core pillar, security pillar. The CSO to the government is the head of that pillar, and all the security agencies are part of that pillar. So what we do when we see that persons are not conforming to government directives, we are aware. We call them. They now go there to go and enforce. So that is how it operates. So churches that are not uh, uh, really uh, carrying out uh, government directives, if we are aware, 
we just a phone call. We direct it to the security pillar so that they go there and go and do what they are supposed to do. Okay. Now, Dr. Leora, if you go through uh, the, the, the public, the popular mm -hmm. parlance now, the local parlance, I should say, you hear people say that, look, if you have malaria now, don't even bother to go to the hospital because if you do, it may be a case of COVID-19. <laughs> I want you to talk in this direction because people are not going for treatment anymore. They rather just attend to themselves at home at the expense of their lives. Doctor. You see, uh, we, this is one of the major problems we actually have. I've even met close relatives, friends, who have the same view that there's no need going to the hospital when you're sick because they're going to tell you that it's COVID. And when you get there, they are going to arrest you. But again, you see, as far as I'm concerned, whether it's going to... They will quarantine you. Yeah, not, yes. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, life has no duplicate. And let's say you go to the hospital and they say it's COVID. It's not a death sentence. That gives you an opportunity for you to be attended to or treated so that you get well and go back to your normal uh, business. So... It doesn't, it doesn't mean that every case that comes to the hospital is COVID. After all, we work in a very busy hospital, and we see just a few, a few cases, a few cases, you know, compared to the population of people we see every day. And in the, in the whole week, like in our clinic, you may not even, you may just see maybe one or two persons who are, you know, suspected uh, cases. So, and often times you do the testing and it's, it's uh, negative. So, what we need to understand is that, like my friend said earlier on, prevention is actually better than cure. But the earlier you are detected and attended to, the better for you. So, if you are sick, please, hospital still remains the best place for you to go to. And because if you stay at home, you may just be, you know, play with your own life. Okay. All right, gentlemen, and uh, as we wrap up the segment now, uh, Dr. Bozos, uh, you, you are, we're, we're still saying that uh, now investigations are still going on by the NCDC and the WHO, that's what you said? Yes. That uh, it, it cannot be airborne? Is that what you're saying? Yes, there's no conclusion, uh, conclusion yet. Okay. The studies are still being uh, carried out until there is a conclusion. WHO will not pass it to the world. The NCDC too, because uh, every every country has its own guideline, but most of the uh, the guidelines is tailored around the WHO guideline. Okay. So there will be guideline to that effect for now from NCDC okay. and from WHO. Okay, and yeah. Dr. Leonard Atsiki, even when it becomes yeah. airborne, uh, the preventive measures still remain the same. Or? Yeah, yes, yeah, still remains the same. Social distance, use of face mask, and uh, you know. Don't touch your face and your mouth, you know, with uh, unwashed hands and what have you. So, and if you do, I think you are, you, are, you, are, you are better prevented from contacting the disease. So, if it's airborne, we still have to maintain the guidelines that are given to us by NCDC and government. Okay. Now, Dr. Osa, before I let you go, finally, uh, the federal government is contemplating reopening schools across the country. Uh, what is the Minister of Health doing in this regard? I mean, uh, guidelines have been given. Uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are preparing for all this. Uh, and the school reopening, you know, just a segment of uh, not just the whole school, people, persons that uh, are writing exams. But eventually, but, schools will uh, reopen. Most schools will reopen eventually. Yes, but for now, we've not gotten to that stage yet. We've not gotten to that stage yet. So we will advocate if the schools are reopening, all the preventive measures, at least, there must be a tap that is flowing strategically placed in all the schools uh, and uh, so, so that the children that are in the schools will const uh, constantly wash their hands with soap and running water. Then the uh, alcohol based and sanitizer will be provided and also the use of face mask. Because uh, use of face mask was a behavioral change. It doesn't just occur in one day. But as we are teaching it, People will buy into it and they will constantly use it. Even last, even last week over the weekend, the president of America he used face mask when he came. Yes, yeah. he used face mask. But he initially was the one that was against it. But yeah. there are things in the world now that uh, you need to use your face mask. But if you don't use it, 
the chances of you getting the disease will be high. Mm. All right, thank you so much, gentlemen, mm. for finding time to come on the program. And we'll be speaking with uh, Dr. Leonard Atsikidi, uh, a family physician and a consultant with the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, and also Dr. Bruce Osa, who is the Director of Disease Control with the Ministry of Health in Edo State. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this program today. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yes,